What is going on, buddy? Zach RC here. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this first episode of my F1 24 career mode series. Guys, it's been quite a while since I've been here making a proper F1 video, but we're back again. The new game has released. I'm really enjoying it so far. We jump into our drive career save today. Should be a fantastic time. If you are new around here, make sure to get subscribed to regular F1 24 content as it comes out as the game continues to release over the next few weeks. Of course, so starting our career. Normally, the last year we started straight in F1, we did it on F1 22 as well. But this time, we're going to start in Formula 2. But as opposed to our very first series back on F1 2021, which is the first time we did F2 on the channel, we're just going to do a three race season here. So keep things nice and short. Keep it into one episode, do three races in one, and then we'll jump into F1 in the next episode. So we'll start things off in Bahrain, go to Belgium, and then cap things off with Abu Dhabi. So in terms of driver, uh, we're going to pick also... Obviously, the option for official drivers is there, but we'll continue on with the custom driver as we always do. I'll play as myself, as I've always done on the channel. For those of you who've been around a while, you've seen me doing this in the past, so you can skip through this bit. I'll leave timestamps in, in the description, so those of you who want to skip straight through to the race in a minute or two, then you can go ahead and do that. But it should be very exciting. I'm looking forward to showing everyone all the uh, all the cool new, cool, the cool new details in the driver career itself, because of course been, there's been a lot of work, a lot of hype that's gone into this uh, this part of the game. Of course, my team has been the uh, the main face in terms of career over the last few years. Driver career has sort of fallen by the wayside a little bit. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the changes are, playing through them myself. Of course, showing them all to you guys as well. So just designing my helmet here. Go typical blue and yellow colours with the, the navy little detail at the back there. Not a lot of choices in terms of helmets to start with. Normally there's, there's a few more, but I suppose this year they're perhaps pushing Bitcoins a, few, a bit more if they can. And no changes there in terms of celebration or radio. In terms of academy, this is the big one. You see, oh, there's our driver ratings on the right-hand side. Those will be crucial across the career mode. In terms of academy, though, now, th th honestly, there's a bit of toss-up here because you have our five normal academies in Mercedes, Ferrari, Red Bull, Alpine, and then obviously McLaren on the right as well. It was a bit of a toss-up this year between Alpine, Red Bull, and Ferrari. But in the end, I decided to go with the Red Bull driver academy just down to the fact that we've got a few more F2 options and I also do kind of want to drive the RB, if I'm honest. So that's our academy chosen. There is our driver looking gorgeous as ever. And we'll look into what team we're selecting. Now, of course, it makes sense for us to do one of the cars with the Red Bull livery on it. I did consider using the MP like I did in the Creative Series during the first season of F2. But in the end, I chose Carlin, my teammate being Zane Maloney, over Enzo Fittipaldi. So well drive Fittipaldi's car. So in terms of setup, that's more or less it. There's nothing much more to go through there. So with that being said, let's jump into the very beginning of our long, arduous journey to the top of the world championship and kickstart our Formula 2 career here in Bahrain. Welcome to Sakir and the Bahrain International Circuit, where the grid is forming up ready for today's race. The new season starts now. I'm Alex Jakes, Alex Brundle is alongside me, and it is time to restart Formula 2. We're so excited to be back. Alex, what are you expecting from this season? Put 22 of the world's best young racing drivers in a pot, some great venues, press go, and it kicks out a champion. I cannot wait to see who comes out on top at the end of the year. OK, mate, I know it's tough in there, it's hot in that cockpit, but your tyres are even hotter, so you're going to have to work extra hard to keep them cool. It matters for performance. Copy that. Let's do this. Here we go, then. No more talking. It's time for action here in Bahrain. I'm going to jump right into this first race from P12 on the grid. Looking for a good getaway here as the lights come on for the start of the first race in our F124 Driver Career Series and it's underway. Lights out, foot to the floor. Go, go, go. Decent start. Going to try and advance on the cars in front of us there. The Ruvalo to the right hand side of the racetrack. Martins covers him off so charge towards turn one in the mid pack here. Going to go to the outside of the first corner, that very tight right hander into the braking zone. Around the outside of Daruvala and Martin too, up into P10 already. Vesti and Manny go side by side through turn two and through turn three now. That short little right hander. We now pull us alongside the Campos, half a car length behind as we charge towards the breaking zone of turn four. Vesti there in front, gonna outbreak Manny through turn number four now and on exit gonna try and take Vesti as well. Sliding there, you can see the lack of traction. We, we didn't get perhaps as good a run as he may have got, at least as smooth a run as we may have got. But we've managed to make it work and we're up in front of Frederick Vesti and now chasing Richard Vashaw for P7. What a start here from P12 to P8. Not too bad at all. Obviously, we'll be targeting much, much higher than this. Look at, at that race win if we can try and close up to the leaders and grab that for ourselves. But there's a long way to go. Eight laps to come in this in this feature race. 
looking through turn 9 and 10. Can't quite get close to make a move on for sure. So for now, we're going to have to hold station on this opening lap. As I say, not too bad a start at all. I'm, I'm quite satisfied with how that first lap went. On to lap number 2 then. Iwasa leads away the dams. Setting the fastest lap as a result. We're back here in P8, as I say. So, and looking perhaps to line up and move on for sure as quickly as we can. Sooner rather than later. Vesti about four and a half tenths back. So no threat of an overtake into turn one. Which can leave us to go completely on the offensive. And try and run down the Van Amersvoort as we go through turn two and now three. Bit of a slide down the exit of two. So can't quite get as good of a run as we might have liked. We're going to try and force for sure to cover off the inside. We're going to try to go around the outside if we can, but just not too late enough on the brakes. Nowhere near late enough on the brakes there to even consider thinking about a move. You see the sliding bit there. I've turned down my traction control settings since the last game, so still sort of adjusting to that. But regardless, pushing on, we're going to try and line up a move here going towards turn number eight if we can. We're going to pull to the inside of the Van Allen into the corner alongside in the braking zone and getting the job done on exit. or kind of get the job done. It takes us a bit longer than expected, but we are through and up into P7 now. So not too bad at all. Our next target being Amori Cordiel in the Virtuosi. Another car we've, we've driven in the Creative Series last year. So it'll be a nice take on that machine. And pushing further on, away from Vashore, Vesti will be his next threat behind. And we had to work out on chasing down Cordiel. It's about seven, eight tenths in front as of right now. Arthur Leclerc there in P5 in the other dam. So dam's doing pretty well for themselves in the opening laps here. On to lap three, DRS is now deployed. Oh, a bit of a run over the curbs there. Not too nice. They're trying to avoid doing that if we can. Again, still adjusting to the change in traction. Cordiel, our next target. Still, we're getting closer, but it's not, not enough to line up a move just yet. Same sort of situation as it was with Vashore about a lap ago. And pushing further on towards the end of the lap now and looking to get DRS down the main straight if we can get close enough to him now. Not quite in range for us yet. Okay, mate. Cordiel's ahead of you. We can't let them hold us up for too long, so let's try and get past as soon as possible and crack on. Push, push. Affirmative, pushing now, I'll see what I can do. And this is a brand new feature for driver crews to go over the cubs, making that same mistake again. But So during these races, we'll end up getting objectives on the left-hand side of the screen there. Very similar to sort of the breaking point sort of objectives of old, but these ones a bit more, bit more frequent. And this one is just to overtake Cordial for the start of lap number six. Uh, struggling here because we're, we're in a long DRS train here, so we're not getting a, as good a run as we might have done because any run we get of DRS, Cordial gets the same on Leclerc in front. So we're kind of struggling here. We're in a bit of no man's land as we come on to lap number five, reaching the halfway stage of this feature race. For sure, still about half a second back from us as Vesti was at the start of lap two, so still nothing in terms of threat from behind. See, look how close we get to Cordial on the exit and then through turn two, sliding over that curb there. That's something we have to sort out in these last few laps. For sure, now putting us under serious pressure. He may pull to the inside of the racetrack here, looking to make a move. Won't go for it, but the threat is there, and he's making us very aware of what could happen should we make a mistake. So Cordiel remains our target. He's about six tenths in front, but as we get to the end of lap number five here, on to lap six, we couldn't quite do it, unfortunately. So that one goes out the window. Okay, unlucky, mate. It was a good try, but we didn't quite meet our targets. Not to worry. Get your head down and chin up. Let's focus right away into the checkered flag. Got that confirmed. So unfortunately then we did not reach that first objective, but I imagine we'll get more across the next two races. Oh, over the curve, a bit too much there. Luckily, we didn't get a warning, so we managed to get away with that, but that will be as um, as lucky next time round. Cordiel stood there in front. Again, we're a lot closer though. What this challenge has done is definitely brought us closer to Cordiel over the last two laps. As you see here, going towards turn 11, we have got DRS and we are right there behind him. Uh, considered the move on the outside, got within a car length just, but nowhere near enough to try anything. So again, we find ourselves held at bay by the Virtuosi. On to lap seven now, so for a lap and a half to go in this feature race and looking to try and get around him as soon as we can. Time is running out for us to actually make this move. Arthur Leclerc is there, the next target in front. The top five are all there. None of them have really pulled away. Oh, over the curbs, way too much there. We're we'll trying to send it though, down the inside. And that was a risky move. And as a result, Cordiel comes right back at us. It was a successful move either. Cordiel is still right there. He's got the jump on us. He's going towards turn nine. We've got the inside line looking in. Gonna try and outbreak if we can. And into turn 10, missing the apex post there, which is always fortunate. And up now into P6 at last. Now, if only we'd done that two laps ago, things would have been a lot better for that objective. But regardless, we are now through. And with a lap and a half left in this race, we can still try and get around Arthur Leclerc. Okay, mate, this is the final lap of the race. The final lap. It'll be tough, though, because Cordiel's still there behind us, looking to pose some kind of threat. He might pull to the inside if he gets close enough towards turn four, perhaps. Is he setting up for another run, perhaps, with DRS? But regardless, we can't think too much about that. We've got to think about attacking and trying to take at least one more place in this race. Big slide through turn two, or the exit of turn two, rather. Cordiel is there. He's got DRS. He's closing that gap a little bit, but it won't be enough to even try to think about move. Uh, but we've fallen back from Leclerc about half second off him as we go through turn four. We haven't got long, much long left to do this thing. We're going to have to be looking perhaps towards that DRS zone out of turn 10 and towards turn 11 through the second sector we come now. Trying to keep it 
under control as best we can. Again, over those curbs, a, a second mistake which could allow Cordillo to come back at us, but none, nothing of the sort for the minute. And it's brought us close to Leclerc. And off the corner, sliding again, the rear, the rear stepping out just a little bit. And that's all Arthur Leclerc needs to pull away for the minute. But down towards turn 10 we come, late on the brakes, practically pushing the dams there through the left hand. And no contact made, DRS now deployed, going to pull to the left hand side of the racetrack and charging towards turn 11, side by side with the Monogasque into the final sector, looking, oh Leclerc gets all out of shape there, going towards the braking zone, we take full advantage, go siphoning up the inside here, and that'll be enough to take away P5, so that's one more place gained, that'll make it seven across the race, that's seven places gained in eight laps, which de it definitely isn't a bad race at all, but if Cordiel hadn't held us for so long, it could have been so much more, we could have been up there challenging Ayumu Iwasa for the race victory, but it won't be enough for, enough for us today on debut here in Formula 2. Iwasa, though, fellow Red Bull Jr., is, is going to take the spoils as he rounds the final corner with Oliver Behrman there in hot pursuit. Teo Boucher and, then, and Dennis Halger in tow. That train runs the line, and Iwasa will win here in Bahrain. Behrman second, Boucher third, Halger fourth, and we will wrap up our debut with a top five finish. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part Fermi. Ah, uh, good race. No, no bad start to you. Thanks for the hard work. We'll keep on pushing. Brilliant stuff from Dams today. What a superb victory. Well, they've sent that one, haven't they? Brilliant start to the season. And that's exactly what they wanted for their early points talent. So with that then, the first of our three races in Formula 2 comes to a close and it's Iwasa picking up the first place trophy after a magnificent drive. You didn't see him get challenged too much by those cars behind. We come to the line in P5 in the end. Zane Maloney, our teammate down there in P17, two places gained, but not, nowhere near enough for threat to challenge us. The driver's championship, it's as you were from the race results. We sit in fifth place in terms of, in terms of constructors. Again, all the same there. Dams take the lead. But all off to a good start. And here's a big thing here. The ratings come into play. So our driver ratings you saw uh, in the setup, those were our starting rates, and now, thanks to our results in that feature race, those ratings go up based on certain factors, which I will show you here as we get our, our, our five different ratings up, and our overall up from 66 to 68, which is a fantastic start. I'm not sure, I imagine it'll be, it has to be a lot higher for Formula 1. 51 experience you get for not DNFing across the race. Uh, finishing position versus starting position gets you more points for racecraft. Awareness, you just avoid penalties in mornings, and you're good, more or less. In terms of pace, it's margin to fastest lap there. You get more points for that. And then oh, your focus will depend on your finishing position so far. So that is our ratings to start things off. And without further ado, we'll jump right into the second race in Belgium. It's Saturday, and that means we're preparing for today's Formula 2 event here in Spa. As the cars are being prepared, let's join them trackside for the start of what promises to be a terrific race. Here we go then, time for our second race here in Belgium at the newly modified spa franc circuit. There's been quite a few graphical changes here. But from P3 on the grid, perhaps looking to t take that first career victory. Porsche and Halger on the front row as the lights go out. We are underway here at spa franc Halger covers us off towards turn 1. We're going to pull to the outside if we can. Up into the source. Porsche leads away. Dominant run into the first corner. Halger on the inside there. And almost, we had to try to avoid him. We had to almost take a slight trip into the gravel trap there. Side by side with the, the MP Motorsport car as they run towards Eau Rouge and Radion for the first time. Porsche in complete control. As we go side by side up through Eau Rouge, a la Alonso and Weber back in 2011, we get the jump on Halger and up into P2 as we charge down the Kemmel Straight for the first time. Fans are on their feet. There at the side of the racetrack. And there goes Jack Doohan to the inside there. Doohan out of nowhere on the, on the start of the race. Up to P3 and looking for P2. Now we're going to have both virtuosis giving us trouble across these two races. We had uh, Cordiel in the first race and now Doohan in this one. But we stay in front of our, of our compatriot. And we're now looks to try and hunt down Porsche. He's got it to a one second lead already. So now the chase is on. We can't let him bring that gap out any longer. Towards the end of the opening lap here, looking in towards the third sector. A little bit of a struggle there through the, left, the right hander. And now towards sector three, where that, where that barrier used to be, very close to the racetrack, is now a large gravel trap there. In terms of sector three here, you can gain a lot of time on the run towards that bust up chicane. But nowhere near close enough yet to go for a move. Still quite a way back. But we're going to gain back a lot of that time that we lost in the first lap. And now onto lap number two of this race, we've got that gap down to half a second, hunting the Frenchman as we run towards Le Combe. Down the camel straight once again, closing, 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 but not enough to go for a move just yet. But a purple first sector just shows you how good the toe is on circuits like this in these cars. 
Porsche now right in front of us and we can try and move as quickly as we can as we run towards the right hander at turn number seven and looking to close but nothing yet. Through the chicane in the second sector out of, out, of, out of and away from Puon. Oh, a bit of a run through the gravel there. They're trying to avoid doing that in the next couple of corners. That'd be a big run through the gravel. Porsche is still right there, agonizingly close. We're waiting for that prime opportunity to run at him here. And this is our first real chance with that, with that, that toe in play. The slipstream being crucial to our advantage here. He's going to try and pull to the inside. Very similar to perhaps how, almost similar to how we fought Ocon back in road to go on F122. Side by side with the Frenchman. But Porsche gets the better of us for the minute. We're going to try and make a move in the bus, which can if we can. But, but just no, no room to go for it. A bit too, um, bit too tight to really try it in there. Off the last corner. And towards the start of lap number three, this Grand Prix, Porsche leads. We're right there. We've got the pace to keep up with him, though. So we'll keep on going as we are. Fastest lap as you go to up towards La Source for the third time. Only six laps in this race, so we've got less, a bit less time to chase down Porsche. Big, big slide there off of turn one. Okay, mate. Porsche is ahead. We don't want to let this hold us up too long, so do your best to get past and get on with the race. Of all the timing, that was terrible. We get a challenge to run down Porsche as we slide, and now two, and it's all over us. Going towards the Camel Straight. We haven't got a DRS. We just fell out of it there. And Doohan is going to is going to have full impotence to come charging at us here. And we're now the victims of an attack on the run towards Lecom. There goes Doohan on the inside. We've given the space into the braking zone. He, oh, a bit of tire banging there. We're over on the curbs. I mean, we might get in front of him, but Doohan may take us wide there through turn five. So through turn six as a result. And Doohan is there to claim the spoils into seven. The Virtuosi jumps into second place. And I'm getting deja vu here from being stuck behind one of these race cars. And now we're down to P3 as Porsche and they can now try and extend his lead. But you've got to close down with a lap and a half left to still do. Oh, sliding over, over the curb, but forcing Doohan out as a result. Getting the place back into P2. And now we've got to put full focus on running nice down the Frenchman. That gap sits now over a second and a half at this point. As he pushes further on to lap number four now. And chasing Porsche once again. The gap is going, but Doohan is going to get another run at us here. We managed to get back around him, but now he's going to come charging back again for round two. As he runs towards Lecom once more. What a run that Virtuosi gets. This time we cover him off. But you can just see the threat that's still behind us if we don't get ourselves back in DRS range and it's by the time we come around for the lap 5. Fortunately, as we get towards the end of lap number 4 here, as we come towards the bus stop chicane, once again, we are back in DRS range just about. But unfortunately, it won't be enough for us to hit our objective of catching him before the start of lap 5. Look how close we get that time, but not enough for the end of it. So we'll end up failing our second objective of 2. And I hope that our day goes better as we cross the line for lap 5. Try and chase down Porsche as best we can here over the last two laps this race. We're a lot close this time, so DRS will be in play for us. And Doohan is a second back, so no threat of him making another attack on us. Or at least getting close enough for another attack to go towards Eau Rouge once again. Looking for that right opportunity. The AI are a lot slower through Eau Rouge than the player in most cases. As long as you stay relatively flat out. Here comes our big chance now. Down the camel straight once again. And no, we've got DRS to our advantage this time. Porsche leaves the door wide open there. We don't have to move to his inside. We'll just go charging around the outside. So thank you very much. I'll slide through and take P1 off your hands. But into the lead for the first time in our F2 career. But Porsche will not let us go here. So he's come through to start the final lap. Haugen, Du and Novalak have all closed back up to us. Up to the source for the final time. Into turn number one. Hoping to keep it under control. No massive slide that we did on lap three. Porsche half second back. He's going to be giving Talga and doing a run too because he's going to give both of them DRS. So we'll try and pull away as best we can. Try and sort of break the toe towards Eau Rouge there. Not as much effect on a shorter straight. But up the hill and now looking to keep things under control on the Camel Straight as we come towards Lacombe once again. This is it. DRS wide open for Porsche. He's six tenths back. Watch it go. Five tenths. Four tenths now. Three tenths. He's getting closer and closer. He's going to pull to the inside of the racetrack. So I go for a move late on the brakes. Will he try and get? Yes, yes, he will. He'll get in there. And a side by side, he's going to jump through and reclaim the lead off us there. As we fight to regain control of our race car, Porsche gets a car in front. Halga might try and go on the attack as he runs towards turn seven. It's going to be very tight in his last couple of, in his last lap or so. Porsche is now right there in front for the taking. But we've got to get enough for run. He's pulling away as we make our way through the second sector. And a slider off the corner. Porsche is going to increase his lead. But it's not over yet. We've still got that large run through the third sector to think about. As we make our way down further into the lap. And looking towards that third and final sector. Halga half second back. No threat to us for the minute. It's all going to come down to whether or not we can chase down Porsche. Into the third and final sector then. Looking to try and finish this job and get back around Porsche. A big toe is going to be crucial to us here as he runs towards those two left-handers, but he should slow up a bit more compared to us. Closing in 
all the while as he runs towards the bus stop chicane for the last time, looking to try and swipe the lead from the Frenchman at the last possible moment. To the outside, going towards the chicane, looking for the checker flag. Side by side in the breaking zone, gonna try and get him. We'll have the inside for the last corner. Checker flags in the air. Off the corner we come, our tires are screaming out. We're gonna just about get in front of Porsche here and run to the line for our first F2 victory. Yes, come on. Oh, superb driving. That is the race win, my friend. Well done. Yes, 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 come on. <laughs> It was a magnificent race and a drive right out of the top draw to take the win for Carlin today. It's a real skill, racing wheel to wheel and also grabbing the fastest lap in the interim. Finding that clean air, they've done a great job of that actually. Team. So this time we can pick up the spoils and win for the first time in Formula 2 here in Belgium. The celebrations begin, Porsche second and Hauger in third. And that result is big for myself and the Frenchman. As if we have a look at the Drivers' Championship going into the last round in Abu Dhabi. Crucially, there's nothing separating myself from Theo Porsche. And whilst it's nine points back, Hauger through consistency is also nine points back. It's a four-way race technically for the Drivers' Championship. Behrman even has a shout in P5, who knows. And Carlin and ART tied with a race to go. Dam's a point back, MP3 back, and Prima 6 back. So it's all to play for going into the last race. But before we do that, we have to have a look at how our ratings have improved since the last race. Excellent improvements across the board here, thanks to that race victory. And that should definitely bring over up by, by one, perhaps even two. We'll have to see the result here as we get all five ratings through. Seven of them gained multiple focus gains. Three there for the victory. We go from a 69 to a 71. We've got 69 qualifying and 71 in the race. Have a look at the run down here. Of course, no DNF, so experience goes up there. So general improvement across the board, thanks to a positive drive in the feature. But now it is time for everything to be laid on the line for the deciding race in Abu Dhabi. Let's jump into the last round. It's race day for our young drivers here in the United Arab Emirates, where the Yas Marina circuit is about to play host to the Abu Dhabi Formula 2 race. Let's get started. It all comes down to this. I'm Alex Jakes, Alex Brundle is alongside me, and for the final time this season, we're about to go racing. Alex, you're looking to sign off in some style. So are the drivers and teams. It's a really important race for everyone here, despite the fact it's the end of the year. They know that everything they do in this event is going to echo for months through the end of the season. Right, mate, I know it's hot in that cockpit, believe me, but your tyres are even hotter than that. You've got to work really hard today to keep them cool, otherwise we're going to suffer with our performance. You give me deja vu, Mark. Alright, thanks to you guys. Let's do this. Here we go then. We again start from P3 for this race. Now, it's advantage Porsche. He got pole positions. That's two points going his way. So, we, so the, game, the aim is simple. Beat Porsche across the line and win the Formula 2 championships. The lights come on. Here in Yas Marina, held the line for a bit longer this time, but it's lights up from the floor, and we are underway. Decent getaway over Victor Martins on our left-hand side. Porsche leaves the gap open towards turn one. Going to try and take the lead here, but not enough for run to go around the outside of both cars. Martin stays in front of second, but only briefly. We go around his outside and follow Porsche through to take second place. The two title contenders now going running nose to tail as we go towards turn number four and five. Of course, where Verstappen made that crucial move for the World Championships a few years ago. They're trying to do the same thing here. Going to try and reenact that almost. Pulls the inside of Porsche. He's going to give us the room there through turn number five, but not enough on the exit. Porsche gets the drive off and maintains P1. Down a straight run. That'll be a DRS zone in two laps time as you come down towards turn six. Closing in general, just thanks to the, to the tow. Porsche defends the inside of the racetrack. He's at the very lower now. We're going to pause the inside ourselves and try and get him underneath going into the braking zone. Contact there as we go through the corner. It's come a bit too much there. Slid into this, his side pod. No damage, or no big damage either one of us. Big slide off the corner as a result. Almost a bit of karma there striking us. But we maintain P2 for a minute. Martin's there behind us. He'll be looking to try and back up his teammate over he can. Our teammate Maloney is nowhere to be seen as of right now, so which isn't fantastic. So we're going to try and fight off both ARTs by ourselves and try and claim the Drivers' Championship. But of course, with our points, we could still win the Team's Championship, but that could be a lot harder if Maloney doesn't score. On to the end of number two now. Six more laps to go to try and get around Porsche. Easy task, but we're setting the pace early on. Martin's about a second back at this point. Porsche about half second in front. And we're keeping pace, but as I say, fastest lap. 
currently going away. It's an extra point for us. But of course, we still need to finish in front of him. That's just how close the gap is. Because remember, he goes in two points in front thanks to qualifying. DRS now in play for the first time in this Grand Prix. On towards turn number six. Go dad down to the inside once again. Get within a corner of the braking zone. Be very tight corner. Contact again. And perhaps a bit of damage to our end plate. We managed to get away with it nice and easy. Both cars there. So nothing too major. I'm going to try and make a move here again on the run towards turn number nine. DRS in play once more. Going to pull to the outside of the racetrack. The fans are on their feet as we charge towards that long sweeping left-hander at the end of the spiral of the circuit. We're going to retake the race lead away for the first time today. We've gone wide though as a result. We've gone wide. We've up the racetrack and Porsche takes full advantage and goes dancing back up the inside. Retakes the lead and now Martins is a threat behind us with Vesti and Owasa. Not too far back either so a lot still to play for but we find ourselves back to square one here in terms of chasing the Frenchman down. On to lap four. Again hunting him down. And that's our final, our third and final objective for this episode. Try and catch Porsche before lap six, because we, we, we haven't done it just yet. We haven't been able to catch or pass anyone at this stage. We didn't pass Cordiel and Bahrain. We haven't didn't pass Porsche in Belgium. But now we get one more chance. But Victor Martin is closing on us more than we're closing on Porsche. So that, that other ART can come into the picture and be a bit more concerned for us here. We're still close to the, the, the leader, so it's not enough. But it's not enough right now. On to lap five. Got 0.7 laps left in order to chase down and take the lead away as Martin stuck to the inside of the racetrack going towards the braking zone looking for an opportunity to try and make a move. Doesn't quite go for it just yet but Porsche, it, in fact, it has forced us almost into a mistake and we almost ran to the back of Porsche but save it though. Time is running out. There's just three laps to go here. We're going to try something drastic in order to get ourselves back around the Frenchman and actually have a lead to maintain going into the last couple laps of this feature race into the penultimate two corners. They've got a good run here. Going to try and dive to the inside if we can. We did it. Well, that, that's a target pass for the first time. Excellent stuff. And now we're in the lead with three laps left to go in this race. But Porsche is still right there hunting us down. And he'll have DRS this time around. So we've got to be very careful in this opening As sector. Stand, we're going to be leading the championship. And there is confirmation we'll be leading the world championship after this race. Provided things stay how they are. But this pack is so close together that one mistake could end it for either one of us. But Porsche is the one perhaps in the catbird seat round. How he tries the outside. We defend the inside going to turn five. He's going to have DRS this time. The whole train is going to have DRS. Horrible exit there. Almost spinning out completely. Let's try and break the turf we can on Porsche. But he pulls the outside. He pulls the outside of the racetrack. Martins goes inside. We're being swallowed by the two ART cars. Three wide for the lead. Porsche gets back in front. Martins now second. Vesti tore outside now in the Prima. Trying to take advantage of our slip up as he run through the chicane. Once again, Vesti falls away. We maintain P3. But as of right now, once again, it's not enough. Second place is not enough to win this F2 championship. We need at least one of those two places back. Preferably the place off Porsche. He's the one we're fighting. Struggling for grip there on these soft tyres through turn nine. Not at all ideal. Porsche and Martins now chasing each other for the race lead. As they go side by side this time, Porsche ducks to the outside of the racetrack. If these two fight each other, we can close right back in and try and take the lead off both of them if we can. Penultimate lap, it's got, it's got to be done soon. If not now, then when? Porsche goes over the curve, both of them losing out in terms of momentum. Porsche falls away, we take second place back. That's enough for the championship lead right now. We're going to try and take that extra security and try and nab the lead from Martins on the outside. We're going to thread the needle between the two ALT cars and reclaim the lead for ourselves. And this time, keeping it nice and tight to the white line on the left-hand side of the track, not starting up the track. And we're up into P1 once again as we push further on now, looking to try and hold on to win this F2 title. One more lap to go in the season. Martins right there behind us. Of course, if we lose out to Victor Martins, then we can still win the championship with a second place finish. But we just need to make sure we cross the line in front of Porsche. Such is the gap between the pair of us. Really sliding the car there through turn three. Not at all nice to try and drive. We've got to just maintain control of the machine for as long as we can and just ensure these soft tyres will bring the car home. Look at the rear tyres. The rear tyres are finished completely. DRS will be in play one more time for these two drivers in particular. Martins going to try and break the toe from here. Put it to the left-hand side of the track and then back to the right again. Martins going to pull to the inside of the racetrack. Porsche is closing. Martins will try and force him underneath, but he takes the lead anyway. And here comes Porsche to the outside. We only just managed to hold him off going into the braking zone. But we're on the outside now looking in. Porsche might try and take advantage. Not going to get close enough. Martins is there in the lead. He looks like he's got it for the minute. We're going to try and take it back, but I think we'll have to settle for second and just settle for winning the title. But Porsche is not finished yet. Down towards turn nine with the final time. He pulls to the outside of the racetrack. Going to cover him off, defend him off. 
into the corner we go in the braking zone. We've got a bit too wide our entry there. Lost control of the car. Poor Cher goes sailing up the inside and takes the takes second place away. Martin's pulling away. Our championship is slipping now. We've got to go for one more move here to the inside of the racetrack. We're alongside him. No, no games necessary. Up the inside of Poor Cher and back into P2. The rear tyres are really struggling. Look at the slide under the hotel section here as you go through the last couple of corners. Martin's is pulling away. The race win is his, but it does not matter in the slightest. So we're going to round the last two corners here and run to the line to claim second place here in Abu Dhabi and with it winning uh, the Formula 2 Drivers Championship. Fantastic! Yes, come on, we've won it! We are the Drivers World Champion. What a result! Enjoy this one, my friend. Enjoy it. Yes! Come on! Yes! And so the celebrations begin and well earned they are indeed. It might have looked simple at times, but as any racing driver will tell you, competing at this level at the very top is anything but simple. There's no catching them now. We have a new Formula 2 World Drivers Champion. There you have it. We didn't win the race, but we won the championship and that's the important thing. And that will be a huge boost for our prospects as a Red Bull Junior going into Formula 1. What, what a day. <laughs> Fantastic racing all around. Porsche was an excellent competitor, but in the end, we just finished him off and won the title by just those two points in the end. Iwasa home in third, Halga fourth, and Victor Martins with the victory brings it home in fifth, beating Vesti and Behrman for the slots. Novalak eighth there, I saw Dunn in ninth. ART win the constructors dominantly over the rest of the field. That gap for the two teams, took two cars to the podium finish there, massive boost for them. Carlin finished in second with just our points. Maloney didn't score across the three races, so we single-handedly bring the Drivers' Championship and second in the Constructors' home to Carlin. And that'll do it for the Formula 2 segment of the series, and we'll now be pushing on towards Formula 1. But before we go on to that, we'll have a look at our ratings and how they've improved here. Expecting a decent, a decent number of improvements once again. Four plus there on Racecraft, fantastic. Three for awareness. And in terms of pace, we're looking at just the one that time, but focus will definitely help us by finishing second. And our overall going into F1 comes to a 74 rated, which isn't too bad at all. I'm not sure how that will stack up compared to, to the younger drivers in the field. I imagine we're close, we're close to a sergeant, perhaps. There's the rundown of our, our total rating gain from the day. And that is all in all, that's been very successful. I thoroughly enjoy racing the F2 cars again. And yeah, I mean, it's been a while since I've driven an F1 car, but... I have to see if we can get used to that once again. But that was our rating going into F1. And with that in mind, we'll have to choose which team we're going to be driving for at the start of our F1 career. Of course, now we are Red Bull Junior. I think Red Bull is largely off the table. It'll probably be too easy to start with. So chances are we're going for, for uh, Cash Up Visa Cash Up RB, the racing balls there. But I mean, if you guys want to hear me drive for another team, then by all means let me know because I, I do want to take in mind what you guys have to say. But in terms of that, that'll be the end of the video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to smash the like button, get subscribed for more F124 content as the game continues further into its cycle. Next episode hopefully will be out tomorrow. Until, until next time, thank you guys so much for watching and I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.